In this video, we're going to look at 1 18th scale Joy Toy figures. We're going to put one together and then compare them to G.I. Joe and other 1 18th scale figures. So here's my Joy Toy figure, all in pieces. This is how it came. I bought this on Big Bad Toy Store. It comes as a kit. It's just in a bag, and it's I think it was around $15. And it's cheaper than the usual Joy Toy, which is around $30 or $40 a piece. But I thought it'd be kind of neat to see the construction, see how it's put together. Um, kind of play around with it. It didn't come with any instructions. It just came with all the pieces in a bag. So you kind of have to figure it out. But, um, you know, it's not too difficult. And I think this video will help if, if you want to try doing that. Or if you already have a figure and maybe you want to take it apart. Or it's broken or something like that. Or you want to do a mod. So the first thing I do, I've got my teacup. Um, you know, I always do this. I'll just fill it full of water. Put that in the microwave for about a minute. Get it real hot like, you know, like you would a cup of coffee and then just soak the pieces in that. So I think I decided I was going to start with the legs. So I think I've got the, um, like the crotch piece and the pants, and I'm just going to fit these together. This is the first time I've ever played around with a Joy Toy figure, so I'm just trying to get a sense of it. It's got these, um, these kind of cool, like, little joint pieces that pop into the joints for the knees and stuff like that, and they're really cool. Oh, so it looks like I'm doing the chest, actually. So that goes together. It's got kind of a split between, I guess, like right below the rib cage. And then, yeah, it's got kind of like that barbell thing, sort of like a, um, like most figures, like a G.I. Joe figure or something like that. And then I'm attaching that to the abdomen. That went together without too much fuss. Heating it up helps so much. I tried kind of messing around with the pieces before I heated them up, and it just wasn't going to work. They're like too... They're just too hard. The plastic is too hard and it's meant to kind of cool off and be set. So you definitely want to heat it off. You can see I'm using a little spoon to kind of scoop the pieces out. I recommend doing that because it's really hot. Your fingers are going to be sore if you keep like reaching into that hot water getting the pieces. So this I think is what I was talking about with the knee. Oh, actually that's the thigh. So that's the upper thigh and lower thigh. So it just kind of pops together and it gives you that leg rotation. That's kind of nice. And then again, I'm scooping out some more pieces. You know, I thought about speeding this up, but if you're really interested, I figure you could, you know, zip through this and kind of like go to the parts where you're, uh, you're kind of curious about, you know, which part you want to see done. So then here is, this is the other side. So there you can see again, the upper thigh and lower thigh going together. All right, here I'm going to, Attach the thigh to the waist, so it just pops in, not too bad. Or actually kind of bad that time, didn't go in. <laughs> but yeah, here you can see how it's split. I think I tried putting the knee onto the, um, onto, the, onto the waist, so I was doing it backwards. So just kind of line the pieces up and just using your thumb to kind of force it on. And again, if it's heated up, you know, just kind of work it on. It's pretty good. So there I've got most of it done, like the major parts. All right, now that the upper body is pretty much done, I'm going to do the knees. So that's where those little kind of double joint things go in. You can see they're kind of these neat little black pre-assembled pieces. And both ends go into either the lower leg or the upper leg. So you can see I'm popping those on. And then there's a little kind of tab protrusion on the front that's kind of sticking out that you can put kneecaps on. Um, you know, kind of knee pads, all those kinds of things to, uh, to get a different look for the leg. And now we're going to continue with the leg. So we're popping on the lower part of the leg. This would be like the, the calf, putting that on. So sticking it into the other part of that, uh, that knee double joint kind of thing I was just showing you guys. And so those pop on really easily. And now it's doing the shoes or the feet. And so with the feet, you have to pop in these little, kind of like a little rotation kind of piece that then you'll pop into the lower leg. And that lets you rotate the, uh, the foot and kind of pivot it, you know, forward, backward, left and right. It gives you some decent mobility on that. You know, especially when you're trying to stand or pose a figure. Now we're going to put in the kneecaps. So those just pop on. Pretty easy. I think I did warm those up though, just to make sure that they'd be, be a snug fit when they cooled off. Yeah, and that, that really finishes them off. Again, this is unpainted, so 
so that black piece might be painted on, you know, the figure you have. Um, or you might want to leave it black, you know, depending on what kind of, you know, look you're going for, what kind of uniform. But here I'm just checking out the mobility, making sure that the pieces feel like they're tight enough uh, to where they're not going to pop off. Because sometimes when I do this, like I don't have the, the piece fully seated and the thing will pop off. But there you can see it gives you a nice, nice double jointed, um, you know, like movement on the leg, good flexibility. And I just, I really like how these look. They look very realistic, the proportions. They don't feel lanky or, you know, kind of like a little little weird in their proportions. And even with the double joint, it kind of feels like they they did a good job of sort of like a compromise between mobility and flexibility and, um, you know, being able to rotate that but still having it look really good when it's in the, um, you know, just straight leg kind of stand in there. Okay, now we're going to return to the upper body. So I'm soaking the upper body in the water just to warm it up and pushing in this shoulder joint piece. It's kind of like a ball joint that gives you the ability to then lock in the arms. Now this is kind of like a flat disc, like two flat discs that rotate against each other. And then either end has, you know, protrusion that'll plug in, you know, the ones plugging into the body here. And then the other will plug into the... Um, into the upper arm. It's sort of like the way that some figures have sort of like, you know, a cutout in one part and a cutout in the other, and they kind of uh, overlap each other. It's just kind of this disc like slips in between the two pieces of the arm. Here's a good shot of those pieces so you can see how it's like a disc. You know, it's not a real ball, but those two pieces really rotate against each other. And now I've been soaking the, uh, the upper arms and the lower arms, so I'm going to pop those on. You can see how it's split, and so the disc will go in between that, which is the, uh, the shoulder or deltoid muscle. It just goes in there real easy. And that joint holds really tight when that cools off. It's really hard to pull that out. Putting the other bicep on. So the left and the right bicep are connected. And now putting in the joint for the elbow. And now here I'm putting the lower arm onto that joint. Those pop right in. It fits really good. And those discs are covered up, covered up really well by the lower arm. So you don't really see them. I'm just checking out how flexible it is. And here you can see a close up. It looks really good. Again, the proportions I really like. It feels really good. So you get about a 90 degree off of that elbow. You know, and it rotates 360. So you don't need like a bicep cut to rotate like the old Joes. Now just putting the hands on. So those are all warmed up. Just lining that up. And just applying some pressure, getting those in. Some of these pieces take a little more work than others. But here you can see a close-up. It looks really good. Good articulation on the wrist and rotation. Yeah, they kind of have that ring on the end of the wrist, almost like a wristwatch, kind of molded into that bicep. Not sure why they did that. It might just be this guy. I don't know if that's like all characters have that. But I think this guy comes with a vest and he's sleeveless. So that might be why. Maybe you could like paint a, a watch on there or kind of blend his glove in using that piece. But the uh, the body's pretty much done. Now we just got to get the head on. All right, so we got to insert this black peg into his upper body. Now I found this kind of difficult to get that like really in there. And now I'm trying to fish out his neck. The neck is a separate piece. And that goes on the top of that black peg. And then the head goes on the ball joint on the top of the neck. So getting this part in was kind of a pain for me. You know, I guess everybody's going to have a different, different kind of experience. But I think it too was like trying to figure out what was the front or the back of the neck. And pretty much I figured it out by the muscles going down the side of the neck and kind of coming together 
in the center of the chest. Now to put the head on so that's nice and warmed up, just got to pop that on the neck. That went on pretty easy. But then you can see again that neck popped off that, that black kind of post thing that's in the chest. So that kind of kept giving me trouble. But eventually I got it. Now this guy wears a hat, so his head's a little a little strange. The sculpt, you know, it's made to accept the hat. So you kind of can't go without the hat. But there you can see that the neck's pretty good on there. And there's the, uh, the head and the detail. It's pretty nice detail. I really like the sculpt. It's like very realistic, but you know, stylized enough to where it reads at the 118th scale. Next, I wanted to put on the uh, the vest. So I soaked that to make sure it was nice and like easy to work with. Remove the head for that. Went on really easily. And then there are just some pegs on the side that you pop in. And because I warmed it up in the water, those, those went in real easily, no problem. It's kind of neat being able to kind of like dress this guy up and put his armor onto him. Could see like modding this or painting this guy would be really easy because you could take this off. You know, just put a different color on it, do whatever you wanted with it, and then put it right back onto him. And so now I'm just going to give him his, his rifle and some of his equipment. You know, I wanted to check, like, how he held that in his hand. It felt really good. The sculpt of the, uh, the weapon's really good. I think it's like a, you know, a short M4 or something like that. And, um, you know, his hat's staying on. He's able to grip it, grip the gun really well. And it just looked really good. I really loved the detail of the figure and the um, the articulation and stuff. And for, you know, for $15 unassembled, you know, assembling it's kind of a pain, but it's kind of nice to, like, do it yourself and you kind of know, like, what's going on underneath the uh, the hood of this thing, you know, how, how you can mod it, how you can um, take it apart. If something breaks, you know how to fix it. So I like that a lot. And then there's, like, some holsters and other pieces that come with him. But a really neat figure. After doing this, I decided I would buy some more Joy Toy figures. Because I knew, you know, how they were constructed. Um, what they were doing there. And yeah, there you can see some detail. It just looks really good. This guy looks like some kind of, you know, mercenary. Or some kind of hired security or something. Maybe that vest is a little road warrior-ish too. You could go that way too. Pretty neat. So it's been a while since I did that assembly and I've gotten some more Joy Toy figures in that time. I thought I'd just set some up in a row next to some other different figures that you might be more familiar with and, you know, just see a side by side, see how they look, you know, size wise, kind of build quality and what their silhouettes look like. So here we've got a female Joy Toy figure, a Cobra Soldier from the new retro line, old school, a snow job, then a Joy Toy figure, that guy with the, the evil mask, he looks really cool. And then some Super 7 retro figures, some more modern G.I. Joes, some Joy Toys in the back, Joy Toy Russian Soldier, and then another new Cobra Soldier, and then that Wolverine. I thought these were good to have side by side, that Russian kind of military style that's modern um, next to the Cobra Soldier. And you can really see the difference in the legs, the way the hips work, the, uh, the sort of like build of the different character. Here's a Marauder figure next to a Joy Toy figure. Good kind of comparison. And then here's a, another close-up, kind of looking at the 25th, the Russian Joy Toy, some of the more Joy Toy figures, and then the Marauders figure, and then that really tough-looking skeleton guy. Yeah, so he gives you a good idea of some of the detail you can get on those figures. I think he was $29, so that's what that'll get you. And then these are the, uh, the different put-together figures, and then that Marauders figure next to him. And then just another shot for you guys to look at. I hope you found this video informative. It gave you a good overview of what the Joy Toy figures are about, how they're put together, what to expect. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Yo Joe.